Welcome back, lesson five, year 11 physics, forces booklet. Today we're going to be learning about Newton's third and final law, which is in that box there. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. You may well have heard of that in everyday speech and conversations so just look at the learning objectives for today <clears throat> you're going to be completing pages 36 to 45 which means you'd be completing a booklet the second of five booklets for double science so you have to for higher tier notice Higher tier is in bold. Not just understanding the law, but being able to state the law. Which is, if a body B exerts a force on body B, then body B exerts an equal and opposite force on body A. So be able to apply knowledge of the third law in different situations. And they give a few examples there underneath. So the first example you see there, you've got Wales packing down against England and the scrum is stationary. Well, we can see that because the scrum half is about to put the ball into the scrum. Could be Mike Phillips, could be Gareth Davis. I can't tell from this angle. Uh, perhaps you'll be able to work out yourself. But whatever the Welsh pack are pushing with, the English pack are pushing back with exactly the same force. Let's say they are pushing with a force of 8,000 newtons. Then England would be pushing 8,000 newtons. Now there's nothing really new or different there because from Newton's first law of motion, you learnt that where you've got two forces acting I should draw the arrows the other way really because the Welsh are pushing to the left England are pushing to the right oh that arrow's a little bit too big kind of that to the right <coughs> and they should cancel each other out now When we talk about Newton's third law of motion, we talk about action and reaction. So in this case, the action would be the pack pushing against this scrummage machine, and the reaction is the scrummage machine pushing back on the pack. Again, it's stationary. Now, We look at this they've given us the the value of the action force and the reaction force 12,000 newtons you could read through that at your own pace there's some examples here underneath again you can go through those when you walk in or run in the force the action force is the trainer or the shoe pushing back on the ground and the reaction force is the ground pushing back on the shoe which is what propels or moves the person forwards you've all, you've all had fun in letting go of an inflated balloon and watching it randomly move around the room it's quite funny the action and reaction force you can see the air rushing out is the action and the reaction pushing the balloon up. The rocket works on exactly the same principle, although rockets have a, a guiding or steering system, so they don't fly randomly around in the sky. That would be very dangerous. And you can see here um, this person sitting down on the chair. 
the weight is pushing down on the chair, the chair pushes back up. Action, reaction. I'm sure you, you get the idea. Going back to now a piece of software that we've used before, remember, you can all access this software. Just type in a Google, WJC, Digital Resources, choose Physics, and you'll get straight onto this. We've covered a lot of these other aspects, but if we now look at Newton's laws and Newton's third law of motion, I won't read through all that. You can pause and read through that yourself. But what does it mean? Let's look. So you can see, look, the harder that you push with your finger on a drawing pin, the harder the drawing pin pushes back on you. You need to think about that in real life. If you just barely touch the drawing pin, it's not going to hurt. But the harder you push it, the more it's going to push back on you and the more it will hurt. So, as it says underneath. For example, when I apply a force to this drawing pin by pushing on it with my finger, the drawing pin pushes back with an equal and opposite force. However hard I push on the pin, the pin pushes back just as much. Ouch. Not so obvious between the pull of moon acting on the earth and the pull of earth acting on the moon. Two forces, action and reaction. And that results in the moon being able to orbit around the earth. We talked about balloons and rockets earlier. So just like a balloon pushing air one side and being pushed in the opposite direction. What we've got here uh, is Newton's third law describing how the rocket generates its thrust. So the answer is there, look. A rocket pushes exhaust gases out of the engine with incredible force, so that's downwards. These exhaust gases push back on the rocket with exactly the same force. If the force on the rocket's large enough to overcome the weight of the rocket, then we have liftoff. So here we have our friends helping us to understand the Newton's laws. Blue, as it says here, press the button to find out what happens when blue pushes tango on the ice rink. Let's give it a whirl. There we are, naughty blue pushing tango. And you can see they move apart at the same speed. They're, they're going to be the same mass, same force applied, therefore they'd have the same acceleration. Action, blue on tango, reaction, tango on blue. As it says at the bottom, tango has been eating far too much pizza. And he's put on a lot of weight. You can actually see he's got a little bit of a belly. Press the button to find out what happens when Blue pushes Tango on the ice rink. Here we go. Pause the video and see if you can make sense of that to yourself. Now, what you should have worked out is because Tango is a larger mass than Blue, if you remember, acceleration is inversely proportional to mass, meaning the bigger the mass, the smaller the acceleration. So, back to the booklet. Key terms and other information there for you. I'll read through that another application in in rugby i'm going to go th now through one that's it that is forces completed what you need to do now is answer these exam questions you complete these 
and we'll go over these together as a class. I'm going to answer this first question with you, and I'll do one higher tier question, and then you can compare your answers when when we're in class. So, question one. Empty lorry acted on by two forces are moving in the direction shown. It's moving to the right. 900 newtons to the right, 100 to the left. And it's also given us a mass. Using information to calculate the resultant force. Well, that's the, the first thing to do. Resultant force. To do that, I'm going to take away 900 newtons. Sorry, I'm going to take 100 newtons away from the 900 newtons. So my resultant force equals 900. Take away 100, giving us 800 newtons. It doesn't ask the direction, but I, I'm going to write it in anyway to the right or in other words <clears throat> in the in the direction that it's traveling in which case that lorry is going to accelerate and part two then is asking us to calculate the size of this acceleration and they've given us the equation acceleration is force divided by mass We've worked out the force, the resultant force, and we give given the, the mass here, 1600, 1600. So A part two, remember equation is equation number answer on units. There's the equation, the numbers, force is 800, mass is 1600. And the acceleration is 0 0.5 because 8 over 16 is half. And always remember, often pupils get these units wrong for acceleration. Meters per second squared. <clears throat> that means every second the lorry is increasing its speed by 0 0.5 meters per second. Part B. The lorry is now fully loaded and the engine produces the same driving force. What effect does this have on the acceleration? <coughs> fully loaded, that means the mass increases. So I'd write something down. I'll, I'll, I'll write it down and I'll pause the video so we're not wasting time. Okay, just written down the answer. When the lorry is fully loaded, the mass increases. As mass increases, the decel the acceleration decreases. Now there's the answer. As the mass increases, the acceleration decreases. You can show that another way. From the equation, acceleration is force over mass. We're saying the force is can it is constant. Therefore, we can say that acceleration is inversely proportional to mass, meaning as a mass goes up. The acceleration comes down. You then answer question two, three, foundation questions, and four. Higher tier, you'll notice on higher tier, the first question, on higher tier question four there, is the same as on the previous page. So higher tier, answer that one. And you've got this question on a rocket. I'll do this one with you for higher tier. <clears throat> I started answering that question. I'm not going to read through it all. You, I'm sure you can make sense of it. Uh, it just asks, what's the total thrust? Well, three times the thrust of each engine, 6,000 rocket moves upwards because the thrust acting upwards is the larger than the weight acting downwards. 
And what's the result in force? Well, it's 6,000, take away 5,000. 6,000 is the thrust acting up, 5,000 is the weight acting down. The result in force is 1,000. So the final part of the question says, or asks, select and use a suitable equation and calculate the take off acceleration of the rocket. Very similar to the previous question we just looked at. Use the resultant force, which is 1000. Find out what the mass is. So we look above, find out what's the value of the mass. Oh, there it is, 500 kilograms. <clears throat> 1,000 over 500 is 2, and remember the correct units again, meters per second squared. There we have it. We've almost completed. I'll leave part B and C for you to do. Almost completed this booklet. It's for you now to complete the questions that I've identified with a red asterisk. Please remember, as always, to complete the plenary assessment for this lesson. And the next video will be for the next booklet. See you then. Bye.